this is the end for me. There's some better actors out there that can do things that I was never able to do. And that's what I've gotten to. You know, but if you don't engage the ego, if you know how to manipulate or play around with the ego. Or so you know how they say hell hath no fury like a lover scorned? Well, seems like Jay-Z might be embodying that phrase to a T, if the latest gossip mill is anything to go by. There's been this age-old rumor floating around about Beyonce and Terrence Howard, and apparently it's got Jay-Z seeing red. And let's be real, when it comes to Beyonce, Jay-Z doesn't play around. We've all heard those stories about how he takes any slight against his queen bee pretty seriously. I mean, folks whisper about how he's got this knack for making people's careers nosedive if they so much as look at Beyonce the wrong way. Now let's talk about Terrence Howard for a sec. Remember when he was ruling Hollywood like it was his personal kingdom? Yeah, those were the days. But lately, dude's been MIA. And the rumor mill's churning out this juicy speculation that maybe Jay-Z had a hand in his sudden disappearance from the limelight, all because of his connection to Beyonce. But it may seem Terrence Howard is now gearing up to spill the tea on what really went down. Word on the street is, he's ready to set the record straight, ready to give his side of the story. Anyway, let's get into it. Now, Terrence Howard has stated that he retired to let new talent through and to save the planet. This is the end for me. There's some better actors out there that can do things that I was never able to do. And that's what I've gotten to. But folks ain't buying it. Nope, they're side-eyeing him real hard and pointing fingers at none other than Jay-Z and Beyonce. Now, why would they think that, you ask? Well, it has to do with what Beyonce did to Terrence a few years ago. Firstly, let's take a sec to appreciate Queen Bey's stage presence. This woman's on another level. Remember when she straight up slayed a live show with a bleeding ear? Or how about when she powered through a concert during an actual lightning storm? Oh, and let's not forget the time she danced her heart out at the 2011 VMAs while rocking a baby bump, all while serenading us without missing a beat when her hair got tangled in a fan and if that wasn't enough she went ahead and sang live on a chair tipping 45 degrees backward while pregnant with twins now even before these iconic solo acts Beyonce was already turning heads as a member of the originally four girl group Destiny's Child she's always k it on stage this brings us to the drama that transpired between Beyonce and Terrence as a matter of fact there was a time when she had literally taken Terrence Howard's breath away until now fans can't stop talking about about it. It was 16 years ago, yet the YouTube clip of that moment still gets comments to this day, pointing out the Empire actor's hilarious reaction to Queen Bey's presence. Back in 2004, Destiny's Child dropped their sultry R&B jam, Cater to You. And let me tell you, it was a hit among fans, especially the fellas. I mean, the song's all about these gorgeous girls pledging to serve up some serious TLC to their men whenever they please. Hey, Fast forward 17 years though, and it's a whole different story. Folks are trying to cancel the tune, calling out its lyrics for being, well, not exactly progressive when it comes to women, particularly lines like, my life would be purposeless without you. And when you come home late, tap me on my shoulder, I'll roll over, aren't sitting well with the crowd these days, but rewind to 2005, and things were a whole lot different. Remember when Destiny's Child slayed the stage with Cater to You at the BET Awards? Those girls were on fire, dressed to the nines in elegant nude brown dresses that hugged every curve. And don't even get me started on Beyonce. Folks were straight up mesmerized by her beauty, with YouTube commentators still swooning over her looks to this day. Now here's where things get juicy. The girls were looking for three lucky dudes to join them on stage for a little catering special. And who does Beyonce pick? None other than Terrence Howard, who happened to be sitting right next to her parents. At first, Howard was all smiles, but as the performance went on, his expression shifted. He looked less like he was enjoying the show and more like he was about to bolt for the nearest exit. Some fans are even speculating that his change in demeanor might have something to do with knowing Jay-Z's reputation. And wouldn't you know it, shortly after that awkward moment, Howard's career started to take a nosedive. Coincidence? Some folks don't think so. Back in the early 2000s, he was on the brink of being the next big leading man. I mean, his Oscar-winning performance in Crash had everyone thinking he was about to take over Hollywood. Now, zoom in on 2008. Terrence steps into the Marvel Universe with Iron Man as Rhodey, and he's raking in that sweet cash, holding down a side gig while being the highest paid actor in the movie. But wait, fast forward to 2010, and bam, Don Cheadle swoops in as Rhodey in the Iron Man sequel. The plot thickens, rumor has it, Terrence got hit with a massive pay cut offer, like slashing it by 50% to 80% for Iron Man 2. But here's where things get interesting. Did he turn down the offer himself, or was there some behind-the-scenes drama, maybe even involving the influence of 
Jay-Z. That, my friend, remains a mystery. Entertainment Weekly spilled some piping hot tea back in the day, suggesting Terrence might have had a bit of a temper issue, being a handful on set. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. So, turns out Terrence Howard wasn't the only one caught up in those swirling rumors about Beyonce's alleged flings. Nope, Sean Paul's name got tossed into the mix too, especially after those whispers about him and Queen Bey hooking up. And get this, there were even tales floating around that Jay-Z wasn't too thrilled about it and may have thrown a wrench into a few of Sean Paul's performances to make his stance crystal clear on boundaries. Rumor has it things got a bit icy between them after they shot the music video for their hit Baby Boy separately. Uh, when I got there the night before the video shoot, I was told I'm not in any scene with her, which to me at the time, I, the way I was thinking about the video, was totally different. I thought we were gonna kind of act something out. But hold up, Sean Paul himself decided to set the record straight on why he stopped performing Baby Boy with Beyonce and whether there was any truth to those juicy rumors. During an interview with The Daily Beast, he spilled the beans on some of his favorite collaborations. First up, Boosta Rhymes, because let's be real, who wouldn't want to work with Boosta? Sean Paul talked about feeling like he leveled up musically by teaming up for tracks like Gimme the Light and Make It Clap. Then there's Rihanna, who he bonded with over their share love for Jamaica during a tour. But when the topic of Beyonce came up, Sean kept it real. He admitted they didn't exactly hang out, but he had mad respect for her music and, let's face it, her stunning looks. So when Queen Bey reached out for a collab, Sean was all in. He thought they were gonna drop an R&B vibe, but it ended up being a dance hall banger. Despite the track's massive success, Sean Paul revealed he only got to perform it with Beyonce three times, and that kind of bummed him out. So while chatting about the whole performance dynamic, Sean Paul dropped some real talk. He mentioned how some of his longtime crew suddenly became fans after just three performances with Beyonce, which kind of blew his mind. He recalled one of those gigs being at Reggae Sunfest during the 2003 Rock the Mic tour. Now Queen Bey wasn't on the tour every day, but she'd pop in on certain dates to do her thing, usually belting out crazy in love with Jay-Z. But here's where things take a weird turn. The second time Sean and Beyonce were set to perform together, things got funky real quick. Sean was in LA doing his thing when he got word they were gonna link up for Baby Boy. So he rushes over, the crowd goes wild, but then something feels off. Despite him giving it his all, he couldn't feel the energy from the crowd, and that's when it hit him. Someone had messed with his mic. Backstage, his own crew was fuming, telling him they couldn't hear a word he was saying out there. Basically, his mic got straight up sabotaged. Now, the first time it happened, Sean brushed it off as a glitch, but when it happened again, yeah, he knew something fishy was going on. Sean had another performance lined up with Beyonce, this time in Scotland, for an MTV event. They did the whole rehearsal thing. Everything seemed smooth sailing. The plan was for Sean to pop up from under the stage, join Beyonce at this big center stage surrounded by fire sounds pretty epic, right? Well, here's where things went left. When it was Sean's turn to spit his verse, the track went all wonky, looping the same part over and over. Sean's there like, uh, what's the deal here? And that was the moment it clicked for him. Someone was trying to mess with his shine. Now here's where it gets juicy. Apparently after this debacle, Beyonce decided to confront Sean about those pesky dating rumors because it was starting to mess with her rep. But Sean's like, hold up, I knew Jay before you and we were cool. So maybe me and him should chat first. But Beyonce's team wasn't having it. They made it crystal clear they weren't going to be working with Sean anymore. Then there's the VMA's debacle. Beyonce tells Sean they're gonna rehearse for their performance, but then the day before the big show, Sean overhears someone else rehearsing Baby Boy. And surprise, surprise, when they check with the label, they're hit with the news. Beyonce's flying solo for the performance. For Sean, it was not only awkward, but downright humiliating, especially having to sit through the show with his wife and other celebs asking why he wasn't up there. And when Sean finally clocked that there was some serious sabotage going on, he decided to cut his losses and bounce. Lesson learned, you don't mess with Jay-Z when it comes to Beyonce. Now turning our attention back to Terrence, he's had quite the roller coaster ride when it comes to controversies that may have tarnished his reputation. Like back in 2001, Terrence Howard's domestic violence history made headlines when he got arrested for putting hands on his ex-wife, Lori McComas. Court documents revealed a chaotic scene. Terrence allegedly busted down Lori's front door and gave her a couple of smacks after a heated phone argument. Yikes. But wait, the drama doesn't stop there. Fast forward to 2010 when Terrence tied the knot again, this time with Michelle Gent. Surprise, surprise, that marriage ended up in a messy divorce after just a year, with Michelle accusing Terrence of domestic violence and even filing a restraining order. To top it off, she showed up in court with a pretty nasty black eye. Terrence, of course, denied it all, even with the evidence staring everyone in the face. Now, fast
Fast forward to 2015, and Terrence decided to address these allegations during his Rolling Stone cover story. When talking about Lori, he said she was talking to him real strong, and he lost his mind, leading to a slap in front of the kids. As for Michelle, he claimed she was trying to mace him, and in the chaos, something accidentally caught her, but he wasn't trying to hit her. Now let's be real, getting on Jay-Z's bad side seems to be the ultimate nail in the coffin. So, let's delve into some of the unsavory incidents he's been linked to, along with the celebrities whose careers allegedly took a nosedive after crossing paths with him. Moreover, whispers of Beyonce's involvement in these matters have also surfaced, adding another layer of intrigue to the mix. First up is Tierra Marie. So back in 2005, a young Tierra Marie scored a deal with Jay-Z's Rockefeller Records. She was not just talented, but also stunning, and she was only 17. Under Jay-Z's wing, Tierra dropped Make Her Feel Good from her first album, and bam, it was an instant hit. Seriously, the song's title wasn't lying. It made her feel good watching her debut climb the charts. And come on, what's better than having Jay-Z as your project's dad and being crowned the princess of Def Jam Records? Tierra was living the dream, no doubt. Also, around the same time, you've got a young Rihanna and Mayo signing up with Def Jam Records. Now, Tierra Mari was already the official princess of the label, stealing all the attention. Being an immigrant from Barbados, Rihanna was kinda in the shadows compared to her more promising label mate. But hold up, everything flipped when Queen Bey decided she was vibing more with Rihanna. Suddenly, the label dynamic shifted, and Tierra got the boot. Lareed spilled the beans in his memoir, saying that initially, they thought Tierra was the bigger star between her and Rihanna. But Queen B stepped in, made them reconsider, and signed Rihanna. Reed said, We had an in-house company showcase and Beyonce happened to be there with Jay-Z, Tierra Marie, Rihanna, a four-girl group called Black Butterfly and Neo performed. At the label, we thought Tierra Marie would be a big star. We spent more time on her, did more work on her, paid more attention to her. A bell went off for me, however, when after the showcase, Beyonce came up to me and said, That Rihanna girl, she's a beast. After a little nudge from Beyonce, the execs decided to give Rihanna a closer look. Fast forward to 2006, and they hit up Tiara Marie with a call, not a fancy letter, just a call, probably made by some staff. And what for? Well, nobody really knows, but the rumor mill says it might have had something to do with her being too tight with Jay-Z. Crazy, right? Imagine getting the boot without a proper heads up from a guy you saw as a father figure. Tiara spilled the tea, saying Jay-Z himself never bothered to give her the news. She said, Jay-Z didn't call me to tell me bye-bye. By. If things played out differently, Tierra could have been today's Rihanna or a big Tierra, considering her undeniable talent. But alas, her peak fame window was from 2005 to 2006. Since that day and Beyonce's say-so, she's been hustling as a struggling artist with just one hit to her name. Another artist that was allegedly also silenced by the Carters was Blue Cantrell. Back in the early 2000s, she was a big name in R&B, giving Beyonce a run for her money. Tracks like Hit Em Up Style and Breathe were climbing charts everywhere. Blue was on fire. But here's the kicker. After years of rocking the scene, she vanished from the public eye. Where'd she go? Given her obvious talent, record labels were practically fighting over her. Eventually, Blue decided decided to roll with Arista Records. She dropped her first single, Hit Em Up Style, in April 2001, and it blew up. Like, seriously blew up. The song not only snagged the number two spot on the Billboard Hot 100, but also scored her a Grammy nom for Best Female R&B Vocal Performance. Not too shabby for a debut, right? Blue Cantrell was riding the wave of success back then. In the same year, her debut album, So Blue, went platinum, and things kept looking up till 2003 when she dropped her second album, Bittersweet. That one included the hit, Breathe, featuring featuring Sean Paul, earning her a second Grammy nom, this time for Best R and B Album. Talk about a winning streak. Now here's where it gets interesting. Amid all her achievements, Blue had these persistent rumors flying around, saying she was in some intense feud with Beyonce. Now Beyonce was just kicking off her solo career with Dangerously In Love, and she was in the early days of her thing with Jay-Z Blue, on the other hand, was tight with Jay and dropping R and B chart toppers around the same time. You can guess how the gossip started. Whenever folks asked Blue about her and Jay-Z, she always shot it down, saying there was nothing going on. Although she did spill the beans to Wendy Williams once, admitting she had a big crush on him. She said, I still have a crush on him now. She spilled, I don't care who he's dating, I always had a crush on him. It seemed Beyonce wasn't too thrilled about Blue having a thing for her man Jay-Z. And Blue didn't exactly pour cold water on the feud. Things got even spicier when she pointed out similarities between her songs and Beyonce's. In an interview with The Guardian, she mentioned how the music video for Beyonce and Jay-Z's Bonnie and Clyde seemed a lot like the promo for her song Roundup, which came out first.
and Beyonce? Well, she threw some fuel on the fire, too. In the song Signs, she drops this line about being in love with a Sagittarius, Jay-Z, and being hurt by a Pisces, Blue. This didn't sit well with Blue, and she said, maybe she's trying to do it to get press, but I want to make her understand if she goes there with me, it's the wrong move. She needs to understand what she's doing and what she's getting into. I'm a master at singing. Oh, but the drama didn't stop there. Blue Cantrell wasn't letting Beyonce off the hook. After catching wind of the whispers, she fired back, accusing Beyonce of ripping her off. The heat got turned up when Blue heard Beyonce's single Baby Boy and thought it was way too similar to her own chart-topping hit, Breathe. Both tunes were edgy R&B jams featuring Sean Paul, and Blue wasn't having it. She straight up complained about it, saying, Beyonce is talented and beautiful, and I'm a fan, but she has a song out which is very similar to mine. She uses words that are in the hook of my song, and if she's that talented, she shouldn't have to copy someone else. Her song Baby Boy has the exact word breathe in the hook. She continued her rant, saying, she's ripping me off, but there is no animosity because I'm a very positive person. However, I'm a little disappointed because she is established and didn't have to do that, but she won't get away with plagiarizing me because I'm a number one artist. So here's the wild turn in the story. It wasn't long after the feud, according to TMZ, Blue Cantrell had this bizarre episode. They reported she was running through the streets in San Santa Monica, ranting about people trying to K her. The whole thing went down around 2 a.m., and witnesses said she was going on about someone giving her poisonous gas. It got so intense that someone had to call the cops. When the officers showed up, Blue pulled the, do you know who I am, card and even referred to herself as a one-hit wonder. The cops decided to take her to a nearby hospital for a checkup. After that incident, it's like Blue vanished into thin air, while Beyonce just kept on slaying with her tours. And then, there's the Jay-Z and Foxy Brown saga. They cross paths when when Foxy was just 15 and Jay-Z was 27. Yeah, sounds a bit sketchy, right? Later on, Foxy signed up with Def Jam, and that's when the rumors started swirling about some romantic thing between her and Jay-Z. But hold up, Foxy's shutting that down, saying it's all about the music, nothing else. Still, a 27-year-old dude rolling with a 15-year-old girl? That's got people raising eyebrows for sure. Jay-Z kept bringing Foxy on stage during his tours while she was still in her teens, giving off major deja vu vibes from the Alia and R. Kelly drama, always seen together, hitting the same parties, you know the drill. People couldn't help but wonder if there was more to Jay and Foxy's connection than meets the eye. Alright, let's rewind to 96 when Foxy Brown and Jay-Z dropped Ain't No N, sparking the beginning of their K-musical duo. This track wasn't just a hit, it was like fireworks exploding, showcasing the crazy chemistry between these two. Foxy brought the fire with her fearless lyrics, perfectly blending with Jay-Z's smooth and powerful vibe. It wasn't just a career boost. It laid the foundation for their tag team brilliance. But wait, they didn't stop there. In 97, they hit us with I'll Be, solidifying their status as a rap dream team. The magic between Foxy and Jay-Z was undeniable, creating this K combo of lyrics, beats, and a shared passion for their craft. They were cooking up something special, and the world was vibing with it big time. But then, things take a turning point in Foxy's career. So, she was all set to drop Black Roses. But then, bam, hearing loss through a curveball. The album got shelved, and her career got a big ol' question mark. Whispers started about Jay-Z not vibing with how things were going, hinting at a possible label detour. The Black Roses hype eventually got cancelled, shaking up their collaboration journey. Fast forward to May 2007, and Black Hand Entertainment steps up. They're managing Foxy Brown now, with Chaz Williams leading the charge. But, plot twist, the release date for Black Roses was still MIA. Come August 16, 2007, and it's official, Foxy's way Waving goodbye to Def Jam, gearing up for her indie record label, Black Rose Entertainment, with Coke Records handling distribution. Big career pivot, right? A fresh path for her artistic vision. Unfortunately, though, things took a bit of a nosedive. Now, the big question is, why did her career take a nosedive despite having Jay-Z in her corner? She's super talented, and she's always spoken highly of Jay. You'd think he would have pulled some strings to keep her in the game, right? It's not surprising that many folks believe that after Jay was done with Foxy, he just let her fade into the background. Rumors are that as Foxy started growing up, getting wiser, and realized how messed up her relationship with Jay-Z was, she no longer felt cool being Jay-Z's little secret playpen. That's when things went south. Jay-Z not only ended things with her personally, but also professionally. He stopped collaborating with her, and to add insult to injury, he blacklisted 
trusted her in the industry. Yep, it's clear that the Carters don't mess around, but let's be real, that doesn't necessarily make it okay. But hey, that's Hollywood for you, right? So, what's your take on all this? Do you think the Carters truly wield that much power to shape someone's fate in the industry? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and we'll catch you in the next video.